All right, Let's, we're on air. Okay, good evening. Uh, I'd like to call the uh, meeting of the Sewer Commission to order, March 25th. And um, I guess first we, there's no public present, so we'll skip the public comment and uh, move right into our um, announcements and um, general information. Uh, two things, one very, very important uh, to us that's coming up is that we have one opening or will have one opening on the uh, sewer commission. Um, Jay has uh, decided to move on, unfortunately. It's still time to change his mind, but, uh, uh, and, and at the caucus there, um, th no one stepped forward for that position. So if someone is, is interested in coming and rolling his sleeves up and doing some, some good hard <coughs> work with us, uh, please reach out to any of us, uh, myself or any of the commissioners here to uh, express your interest or find out more about the joining us. So please consider that. We need someone that would be good. Um, uh, not required, but it would be good if we had someone interested that was actually connected to the sewer to uh, sort of more directly represent uh, that contingent. Um, the other thing um, uh, I'd like to again mention, um, this is more for the restaurants um, in town that have grease traps. Uh, we're still having trouble getting um, the reports, the monthly reports from uh, people who have grease traps. and. Um, <coughs> Uh, we really would encourage you to do that. We would rather not resort to uh, to, to fines and, and such things, but uh, uh, we may have to because we're not we're not getting a good response on that. Um, and then the third thing, which just uh, just came up uh, for anyone who out there who may have picked up one of these really nice pamphlets uh, downstairs um, in the town hall on the the solution to stormwater pollution. Uh, there is one thing in here that we would, as a sewer commission, like to take exception with and ask you not to do. Uh, that's under the swimming pool and spar section. Uh, it says, whenever possible, drain your pool or spar into the sanitary sewer system. Uh, and that would not be a good thing. So um, we'll have to go black these out or something. But uh, anything that goes into the sewer system, we pay um, to have processed. Um, so... Um, it, uh, if, if you're on the sewer system, please do not dump your pool or spar into the uh, sanitary system, uh, or it will come in, uh, come back to haunt you in the form of bills. Okay, um, we have no appointments this evening, so we'll move <coughs> right into to current business. And uh, DPW Director Jack Rodkins has, uh, has has joined us. Um, for an update and, and discussion on some of the ongoing things that um, you know that Jack is uh, heading up for us, um, let's see. maybe we could take this a little in the other order because um, we also have Pat here uh, as a representative from uh, um, Weston, Weston Sampson to um, and we have a um, proposal from them. We've been working with them on our I and I reduction inflow and infiltration reduction, uh, and we're anxious to move out on uh, on that on that project it's very important uh, to us and and the ecology here to um to not have these um situations so weston sampson's given us a proposal um in order to um, go out and help us find where these uh, inflow and infiltration come from and uh, the next target uh, we've done a lot of metering we know generally what areas in town the problems are coming from uh, and the next phase of this is to uh, literally go door to door um, and um, do some house inspections to see if we can uh, find any any possible inflows and the major target there is uh, is sump pumps which we've talked about before which are not supposed to go into the sewer system so Pat do you want to uh, come up and give us an update on the where the proposal stands uh, sure. Hello, everyone introduce yourself Pat. Uh, Pat Cotton from Weston Sampson Engineers. Um, at the last commission meeting um, we on March 11th we had discussed a proposal to perform building inspections in the Grand Street area of town to locate uh, private sources uh, of inflow located on private property. Um, those types of, source of sources include uh, sump pumps, open cleanouts, um, driveway drains, things of that nature. 
that are not supposed to be connected to the sewer, um, but we have strong evidence backing it up from studies that we've done in the past <coughs> indicating that the, there is an issue in the Graham Street area uh, and that inspections are recommended to be performed of the basements of these homes to look for, most importantly, uh, sump pumps. So the revised proposal I sent to Barb on March 17th uh, to address um, the Commission's <coughs> concerns about getting into approximately 80% of the buildings. Um, so what we did was we revised the scope of the contract to add two extra days uh, after the two rounds of inspections to basically allow for a final letter to go out and um, kind of a combination of effort between Weston and Sampson and the Commission to get those final inspections scheduled on two eight-hour days that we'll reserve to get those done. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and I, I haven't heard any response on, on the revised okay. um, proposal, so I, mm -hmm. if there is any. Okay. Um, I'd open that up to the Commission for any discussion on the proposals and so, uh, Mr. Chair, if I could, proposal. Pat, you, you're saying you're going to do 80 percent? Is that what is that what the goal is? The the goal is 80 percent for that for that price that we talked about. Yes, that that is the goal. So after the two rounds, wherever we stand, <coughs> we reserve two eight-hour days. Whether we want to take a two, let's say a two-week period, a three-week period to send out another letter, and we'll schedule as many more appointments as we can. Right. Hopefully, we'll reach that percentage before, but afterwards, hopefully, it will be even higher. Right. Is what we what, what we're hoping for. Uh, Mr. Chair, how many homes? How many homes are we looking at? Do you have the number of homes again? Was it, was it it's two hundred, right? Around two hundred, yes. Mm -hmm. What was the I? Don't remember, and I don't have it in front of me here. Um, the 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 projected cost of this effort on the new proposal with the two extra days. Uh, well, the projected the, the projected cost doesn't doesn't change. It still stays at the thirty thousand. We'll just okay. we're just going to reserve those two days specifically for appointments set up after the two rounds. Okay. Good. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Like I say, I, I just for the money that we're paying, it's maximum number of homes, right. uh, so eighty percent is a good number, but it's still not guaranteed, and, and that's the only thing that I'm uh, looking at. Now, when you say set up appointments, <coughs> who would be doing that? Would that be Weston Sampson, or would that be our office, or would you be just going? We would be performing the inspections, and right. But how would you for the last two for the two eight day the two eight hour days? The whole project. Oh, it would be Weston and Sampson, a two-member team from Weston and Sampson. Right, but would you notify the homeowner before you go to try to make Correct. appointments? The okay. homeowners would be notified a few weeks before uh, in a letter that would be mailed uh, from the sewer commission, um, allowing uh, the homeowners to schedule appointments um, on their own, uh, coordinated through Weston and Sampson. There will be a number <coughs> on the um, on the letter that goes out where they can leave a voicemail <coughs> or talk to someone and we'll do the best that we can to schedule an appointment at their convenience. Um, we start early in the morning and we work late and we did allow for one Saturday mm -hmm. to accommodate for people who can't make appointments during the week. When you, excuse me, Pat, when you say early in the morning, what's, what's early in the morning, late at night well, in your definition? Around like 8 o'clock. So from 8 to what's late at 8 night? 8 to about 7. Depending. If there's a lot of appointments later at night, then we can go later. We certainly won't go knocking on doors, um, you know, after like 6 o'clock, between like 8.30 and 6. And, and how long do you anticipate to be in the resident's home to doing this inspection? Um, it's a relatively quick inspection. Um, I would say probably 15 minutes at max. And when you go knock on the door, I presume you would have identification from Weston Sampson and yes, we will have a something Weston from the Sampson town of uh, certified uh, Weston Weston Sampson identification. <coughs> to Weston Sampson shirts, a, a, a crew safety vests, every, everything. Mm -hmm. 
Good Mr. questions. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Um, yeah, maybe more, uh, more for the sake of anybody out there that's listening that uh, is in this is in this area uh, that will be getting these letters. I think um, probably the commission has. It's a lot up to us. I think uh, the percent of success. Uh, just for everybody's information, you know, in our regulations, if you're connected to the sewer, um, the commission does have the right to come inspect uh, your your home in the area of, of interest, obviously. Um, and there are penalties if you do not allow um, access to the home. Um, there are penalties that can be that can be brought brought to bear um, that are sort of per day penalties. So uh, again, we hope not to, to have to take that route. Um, uh, but I do hope that that encourages people to, to schedule these appointments. Um, and um, I think we need to make sure that the letter goes out is pretty clear and maybe we, we include a copy of that policy um, with the letter so people understand that um, it, it's not completely optional. <laughs> um, um, but also, you know, it's, we have a lot of good data. We spent a lot of good money to really monitor the system and see where these where these issues are um, and we have based on expert um, review of the data very good reason to believe that a lot of it is sump <coughs> pumps uh, and that's why we're, we're targeting those uh, so um, again if you have a sump pump um, it's not too late to get rid of it and uh, um, but uh, that's what we're looking for quite frankly and and we do need to get access to homes and we will uh, we will work very hard, and the commission is going to uh, give a lot of support to Weston Sampson as much as we can, which is <coughs> considerable, to, to get into the homes. But uh, if we can schedule them and make them convenient for people, that would be our goal. Right. Um, well, future rate, <coughs> future rate increases rely on how good we do this. Yes, excellent, excellent point, uh, Mr. Bellotta, That um, you know we're we're converting um, we're converting quickly here to paying for the water that gets sent out of town, not the water that goes into people's houses. So, um, and we know for a fact that we have too much, um, we have more water going out of town than going into the houses. So there has to be another source. Um, and the primary source, again, we've, we've narrowed down to the, um, to sump pump type of things um, directly related to rain events. Um, if, if, we st if we have to start paying for um, all of the this excess water that's going out of town, uh, it, it's not inconceivable that that could impact the rates by as much as 20%. So um, it's in everybody's interest to help us find these sources uh, and, and get rid of them uh, while, we have, while we have some time. Okay, um, so in the interest of getting this, getting this moving, because we want to get this activity done before the end of this fiscal year, this is money we allocated and, and plan to spend and uh, we want to spend because we want to find the problems. So if there was a motion on the uh, proposal. Make a motion, we go ahead with it. Thank you, Mr. Pallotta. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? The, the only question, what is the targeted date for you to start this? Uh, we're, we're looking to schedule it early May. And it'd be completed by the middle of May? Um, probably the end. After the first round, we usually like to give a week or so for the calls to come in. Um, and then you do a second round because if after the first round, if, if nobody's home, they will have already received the the letter from the the commission. Right. Then they'll get a letter on their door. So we'll give another week after we visit those homes again, and then probably give another week after that. And then we'll have that those final two days for any of any remaining uh, customers. Sounds good. So <coughs> that's what we're shooting for. Yeah. So, Mr. Chair, one more yes, question. Sir. When they go in, they find a sump pump on the property. Is there anything that we can do to assist them on how to show them to uh, divert that water? As a sewer commission, I'm not sure, but as a as a as a neighbor, uh, I, I would think as a neighbor, <laughs> and maybe we can ask that question to Jack. Um, some residents are going to have a problem. Uh, where can we put that uh, water? If someone has a sub pump that's going into the sewer because they have a small lot, is there any solutions that we can do to help them keep it out of the basement? I think that would be a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, I'm just saying I think if we're there for assistance and guidance, maybe some advice. Um, 
Don't go I don't think that. there's any easy solution yeah. in the size of the lots, but uh, <coughs> one thing for sure, we, we can't have the sump pump. That's, a, that's yeah. a given. So for people out there that have sump pumps, get rid of them. We're going to be able to tell if they were in there. It's illegal. It's going to cost you more money in the long run. And people have come to the department and said, well, what am I going to do with the water? Well, we'll help you somehow. I can't guarantee we'll get it somewhere to your liking, but one place it can't go is in the sewer. And like, as you said, Mr. Chairman, there are the rules and regulations that allow us to go into the home to look. We're, go we're going to do that. Uh, I expect full cooperation from the residents. We're not going to go pounding on doors, but it'll bankrupt the sewer division uh, in a year if we don't raise the rates. And if we have to raise the rates to cover the water that we're not building, the rates will be exorbitant. So let's cooperate out there. We'll work with you. If you want to communicate with our department and, you know, we'll get to Weston and Sampson, let's do what we can do. Let's get this out of the way and let's, uh, let's put this behind us. You can't put storm water into the sewer system. Well, we're not out to hurt our uh, residents. We're out to help them. Absolutely. Right. You know, Absolutely. We'll do whatever we can. Yeah, we'll you know. do whatever we can, but th the fact of the matter, it's, it's an illegal function. You can't put it in the gutter either because that'll end up well, in the... Well, uh, it's a problem. Yeah. It's a problem for sure, and and if, if you're feeling left out or you know, give me a call and I'll come out and talk to you, and we'll we'll see the best best solution. Great, thank, thank you, you thank Appreciate you, that. Mr. Rodigans. <clears throat> okay, um, you're up. Pat. Okay, we hadn't we any more discussion. That was the discussion. That any was more discussion. That was more discussion. Okay, <laughs> so all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. None opposed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Pat, thanks for your right. time on this, thanks, too. Pat. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. So, the other, uh, the other item, uh, good job on the first one, Jack. Uh, <laughs> um, the other ongoing item that we uh, need to discuss as a, as a group, um, it's on Jack's list, but we're all participating here, is the uh, generator maintenance. Um, our, our contractor for the operating system um, uh, small water systems um, had given us a proposal for generator maintenance we have 10 generators uh, one associated with each one of our pump stations uh, we had a meeting with them at the last uh, meeting a couple weeks ago and we asked them for a, uh, a revised proposal uh, one that would essentially um, give us uh, split it in two one would be for the rest of this fiscal year and would include uh, what was termed the major maintenance as, as sort of an event just to, to, to make sure we have uh, have our generators in good shape for this year but then to go into next year give us a proposal if it were incorporated into and in the same type of criteria as the operating contract that we have with them um, and I don't know if, See, if we got anything my, you just stole my thunder oh i'm sorry <laughs> that was going to be my explanation because I'm the sorry, short Jack. the short end of it is i haven't heard back from him i shot him off an email okay uh, lots of times they they know when the meetings are it wouldn't be unusual to get that information late in today i didn't get it today after speaking with you so i i did shoot them off an email but okay. uh, you're exactly correct we mm. need a prorated contract and then we need a, a contract for the entire next year Okay. and to separate the tasks and as of yet I uh, unfortunately I don't have anything to move that forward okay. sorry for taking stealing your, right. your thunder was it didn't seem that much no, thunderous to me but. <laughs> yeah. sounds better when you have a little explanation so uh, I'll keep okay. on it and I'll inform the Commission through yeah. email okay. and you can bring it up in your next okay. maybe uh, if they're having some trouble because I know the the second half of that request was a little thorny for them because the second half in included like our current contract that they would they would accept the responsibility if there was a problem with the the um, generators um, which makes it a little more complex if that's what's holding them up um, I leave it to the Commission here but I would I would appreciate just the first step even so we right. can get moving with the, yeah. the major maintenance to make sure they're in good shape well, I, and I deal with right. the second half later they, they rewrite a proposal based on their understanding Right. We can then take it and, and highlight or do whatever and send it back but without anything, without anything to go on. Yeah. And right. I think if it's going to be a, um, a question of basically who pays for what, when, mm -hmm. then they ought to have that in the initial proposal, even though it's going to be prorated. Right. So what are we, March, April to the end of June? 
We asked them to coincide their contract. That was the mechanics of it to get it on the fiscal year for budgetary purposes. Right. But I think the first step is getting the, the first proposal, prorated or otherwise, as to the definition of scope. Right. And yeah. we don't have it. And I yeah, will was there ever any maintenance done to these generators? Was there ever any? Yes. <clears throat> any maintenance done? Yes. Up to this point in 10 yes. years? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Certainly not as good uh, or as thorough as we expect them to be. Any idea when the last time they were serviced? I don't. And let me, um, good segue into this. I, I don't um, know that I've, I, in fact, I know I haven't told you publicly that we, uh, that our technician for the sewer, our former technician, uh, has resigned from the department. He's looking for, he's not looking, he's contracted a job elsewhere. Uh, he'll no longer be in our employ. Uh, he did a lot of great work for us over the years. Right. And I'm sure you'll join me in thanking him for that. But um, uh, I did want to say that publicly. We thank him for his service. Uh, he'll no longer be with us. Mr. Well. Mr. Chair, if I could. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just want to, uh, Jack, and go through memory here. When we talked to uh, SWSS, uh, we, we talked to him about running a separate proposal for the rest of this year uh, for the generators, which would be the trial test, as we all just talked about. I think, Mr. Chair, what I'd like to see is when we renew the contract, incorporate that into one contract and keep it going forward that way. So it won't be two contracts going when we renew. Well, yeah, I, I don't think that's difficult. I think the more difficult thing is let's get going. Well, let's that's, that, that's up to you to talk started. to them and get them going. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that was a consensus yeah. as well. Okay. But if you need a hand or if you want me to be with you when you talk to them, uh, because we have a pretty good idea how the, the uh, contract mechanism works, let me know. <laughs> Oh, but oh, you, 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 you know it you, you know it more than It'll all, anything of substance will go before the commission mm -hmm. as a whole. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I I'm I think I probably wasn't very clear with, with my um my suggestion of to keep this thing moving and keep us make sure we're we're clean is that perhaps we get a proposal from them for for simply you know, quickly so that at the next meeting we could deal with it that would be just come in and do the major maintenance piece of their proposal. So that, so that we know we've got our generators in good shape, and that gives us some some time to work the the, the more thorny issues with them. Understood. Yeah, much clearer. Yeah, I misunderstood. Yeah. yeah. We'll do that. I'll give them that information. Good. Anything else? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could, um, have you got the report from for Unitel yet? Have no. you sent that out? All right. Do you know when we can get the letter over to, to Napoli? As soon as we can. Can you get us a copy on that when you send Absolutely. it over? But it's, like I said, not an email, kind of a report of like what happened, you know, the dates and stuff, if you got it. Thanks. Good. Thank you, Jack. Okay. Um, I know the next, well, these all, these all are very interesting to you, but the next one's particularly interesting. Um, going into the sewer commission projects is the, uh, the SCADA system that, that Jay has been, um, has been driving and um, get to the point of clean handover to the DBW. So, Jay, what if you? Where are we with yeah. that? I see a lot uh, of well, email. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of emails and some phone calls, but um, you know we're ready to move move forward. Oh, good. I'm you know comfortable now with what they're doing. Now that I've had conversation with them, they've explained what Speaking they're going to be doing. Microphone. Uh, you know the issue. Jay, make sure you here. talk right into the microphone. Thank you. Can't hear. Sorry. Right. How's that? That work? Mm. I know there's not a big crowd here. <laughs> Maybe it's part of my <laughs> but, <laughs> but the hearing is not so good. <laughs> uh, we're, we're ready to move forward. Like I said, we've had uh, some emails. I've been a few phone conversations with them. We had the on-site visit. Uh, they went over what they're going to do with the components of the system. The um, removing the existing monitoring system, installing the new system, you know, the physical installation, and then there's the programming aspect of it which is the biggest uh, cost and, t and time consuming so and you saw the emails um, regarding uh, the internet connection uh, the fact that we can't get a hard line in there we have to go with the wireless they're going to be they have a quote for doing uh, to router with a modem <coughs> through a wireless through cell phone um, which is an additional cost on top of their, the original proposal uh, so you know we're ready to, to they're ready to move forward we're ready to go 
So um, I, I haven't. I, I've seen a lot of communication and discussion about warranties and support, which is great. Uh, yeah, which, the, uh, I have asked them to state their warranty regarding the components and particularly the tech support for the programming, uh, because the programming is a big component of it. And once they do the initial setup, I wanted to know what that was afterwards. And they're they're basing a lot of the tech support on that they're going to be able to remotely access through the web to make changes, adjustments. Uh, it gets costly if they have to come out to the site and they start charging by the hour. But they said that should that really shouldn't happen. Um, most of the, the programs should be able to, they should be able to do remotely from the website or through through the web website. Uh, and there was the warranties that they recommended with a modem as far as um, if, they, if there's an issue with that, being able to replace that right away. Uh, and Steve, the IT guy, uh, recommended, uh, recommended the warranties. I talked to Dylan today about it, uh, and he recommended going with it for the, 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 the it's short money for five years to cover us uh, to do that. Yeah, well, so that looks good. I think that's really yeah. good, really good work. So, so do we do we have the all the quotes now that we need that we can? Well, we have the original board. quote. Uh, First Electric did give me. Um, they did requote the components, the touchscreen, and the controller, which they gave us some better pricing on. And then we have the quotes that they emailed regarding the internet connection, and the quote for the warranties and their tech support. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have from them. Mm -hmm. So how do we, trying to get over the, 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 the finish line here, mm -hmm. how do we bundle this all up and, and pass it over? Well, I'm, I get what, well, see, this is the issue that came up because first, I'm recommending we buy the components directly from First Electric. They gave us the price quotes from that. And then the labor and programming aspect I guess they're going to come through Hall Pump. They weren't comfortable giving me a quote. They said they're working for Hall Pump. So I feel Hall Pump, I guess, and First Electric need to work together and clean up the proposal based on what we've talked about and include the additional uh, the warranty and the tech support uh, comments and pricing in their quote. And, and we, like I said, we have the... Pr the price quotes for the components, the touchscreen, and the controller from First Electric. And we can go ahead and purchase those directly from them. So, so the major components we we have we have separate quotes, right? And then Hall Pump would be the contractor for the prime o order that would pull all this stuff together and and integrate it. So we need a yes. quote from Hall Pump for that. They just need to revise their original quote that they gave us. Okay. The programming and the labor, the labor, First Electric's labor. And I would like them to include the warranty statements from First Electric and the tech support statements from First mm -hmm. Electric. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes. Jay, uh, uh, let, me, let me try to understand this. If Hall Pump, uh, is gonna, they're going to be doing the install, right? They are working with First Electric for the removal of the existing monitoring system. Okay. And then the installation, the physical installation of the components, installing controller in the electrical panel, installing the touch screen, there's a cabinet that the old monitoring system in, they're gonna install in that. And they're working together to do that. Okay, so the original proposal from uh, SWSS was, I don't even remember, was it? 67. Six, yeah. Forty and ninety cents, six thousand seven hundred forty dollars and ninety cents. Okay. And did they give a breakdown of that? Uh, parts give, versus yes. labor, parts. Yes. Okay. So the components, the, the labor. Uh, now our contract with SWSS says they would buy the parts at our cost. So whatever cost you got, they're gonna have to. We're gonna buy for them anyways. Is that correct? We we supply the parts. They they supply the labor to install. Not on this. Yeah. <clears throat> on this as well. Well, originally they the originally is. they the components were included in the price. Right, but that's what I'm saying. If you can get ask uh, SWSS uh, what what the price of the components are, it should be the same as what they're buying it for. Where they should make money as a as a company is the install of it, and for the monitoring if they're going to be monitored or not. 
Um, some confusion. Here. Uh, the small uh, water small, wasn't, wasn't going to well, play Hall, a role, well, right? It's going through Hall, though. Yeah, Hall. Uh, it, well, this came from Hall Pump to small water to us. It's kind of going through. Because our contract's with small water. Our contract is with small water, for, right. yes, for maintenance and operation. Right. So small water is our vendor uh, doing the project. So I, I guess the question is, if small water is coming in at 67 40, yes. uh, I, I would look at it, and again, pots being a, a pass through, I would look at the labor cost. Now, if Hall Pump is charging the same labor cost, wh where's the savings? I think the number was a little high because it was the first one. I think we talked about that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, from I don't the think there's going to be any savings on the labor of the program. The labor's the only savings going to be is if it's less hours than what they quoted. Yeah, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say, Jay, is take this number here, yes. uh, and then do your breakdown of what you got, and if whichever I one's good. Yeah, I did not get a breakdown. That, that's well, what actually, we need. I didn't. I only got a breakdown on the. I asked them for pricing on the parts. I didn't ask them to make any adjustments on the labor or the uh, programming. Right, I, they put in here is, but th that's what I would say is because parts mean nothing to me. It, it's the total package. A part could be a dollar. A part could be a hundred dollars. A part be a thousand dollars. But if uh, they're coming back at sixty-seven forty, and you found out that the parts on this is two thousand five hundred bucks, mm -hmm. right? So that means the rest of it's going to labor and programming. So if it's labor and programming, how much is the programming, and then how much is the labor? And again, well, they have programming here at thirty-five mm -hmm. twenty and. Hall's labor in here at twelve eighty. Okay, so just some quick arithmetic. Is it twenty five hundred for the parts? No, they had originally had uh, twelve sixty for the touchscreen and seven thirty four for the controller. So just that, just add those up. What do you come up with? Well, that's the sixty seven forty. No, I mean your your numbers. What do you got for parts and stuff? The pricing they gave me on parts. Uh, thousand fifty dollars for the touch screen and five twenty four for the controller. All right, so you're cheaper on the parts? Yes, they came they came down on the parts. Okay. And then there's the, the the parts, the components for the the modem and the router, the antenna and the installation for the wireless connection, which was not mm -hmm. originally mm -hmm. part of this. Well I think we said as far as the internet and stuff, that's gonna be the town anyways. But I, I'm just saying we no, have we're paying no. for that. The the town. Well No, we're paying for the installation, the components to get the internet we're Verizon is going to be charging a monthly fee for it. Right, but we're, we're responsible for getting the modem to the uh, pump stations. No. They're going to take care of that, too? No, yeah, that's what their quote was for, was for the router, and the, which is the modem in it, an external antenna, the, uh, the installation and programming for that to make the wireless work because we could not get a hard line from right. either Comcast or Verizon in there. So uh, all that's included in the uh, 67? No that the price quote that they gave us for the internet connection is on in addition to the 6740. So, so I guess what I need to know is what are we getting when you do a, a uh, an RFP or when you do a proposal you spell out what we're getting right and, and that's what I need to know I mean if you're saving 50 bucks on a part versus to have the company that we hire to handle our services I would rather give the 50 dollars to the company that handles our services if we're talking a few thousand but, dollars. But they're not handling it. They're hiring Hall Pump and First Electric to handle it. But it's all still going through small water. I don't see how it's going through small water when Hall Pump is, it's Hall Pump and First Electric <coughs> are, are doing the work. For small water. Yeah, let's, let's, let's back up, let's back up, uh, back up a little bit because the, the, original, the original quote we got was through Hall Pump. No, through... It was Hall Pump to address to small water, small water to us. I think that was an after the fact. Well, I think we asked if I we asked if Hall, if Small Pump would be the coordinator of this, and they and they said yes, they would do right. that. So right. So that was actually the second step. The first right. step was go directly to Hall Pump. We asked Small Water because they are our contractor, and we we do all the rest of our work with them. If they could step in and manage the whole project for us, and because they're going to take over responsibility for it anyway, once right. it's all in place, it's it, yeah. it's sort of the, theirs. Yeah, their technician <laughs> Al will be on site as right. well because he has to learn the system, exactly. see what they're going to be doing, and there'll be some training for the use of the 
the touch screen and for communication. Right. Yeah. So small water has a role to right. play, whether the contract is through them or not. Uh, and they're willing to have the contract go through them if that, if that was our, our wish, but it wasn't, it wasn't there, it wasn't driven by them or anything else. It was how we want to handle this. So we, ha so we, it's my opinion, we still have that option to go either through small water or directly through hall pump. The other thing is, as Jay says, is that not everything that Jay just talked about was in that original quote, because the original quote, uh, you know, said you have to go you get us, you know, you have to go get us a hard line, right. uh, you know, connection that's to what, the internet. So that's what I'm saying. There's I actually mean, more in here than we had before. No, Jay's done a good job, but I like to see comparison what it is for what it is. I get lost when you start talking about components. It's the whole package. So if Hall Pump, uh, if you get a bids from Hall Pump. And that's where you got it from, right? In first electric? No, I. No, the original quote came from Hall Pump through Small Water. Mm -hmm. I talked to uh, both of them, but I mostly talked to First Electric because they're providing the components, the programming, and, and the in installation with Hall Pump. But okay. I feel First Electric technicians are doing the majority of the work. And, and for Hall Pump? When they do the install, yes, for oh. hall pump. All right. Mr. Chairman, yes, you get a lot too of complicated on that, and something happens, you're not going to know who to blame. Yeah, I know. Or who to go <laughs> after? Now, whoever we place the order with. Well, right. I'm just. <laughs> so we, but we need to decide that, and, and, and if small water is going to be responsible for the items that are in there, we should lean with them a little bit. Well, that's and give them a little bit of leeway on it. I, I guess that's what I was trying to say is that we, we hired a company to do this for us uh, and come to us with a price. And uh, I know Jay uh, is very conscious about price, and he did what he had to do. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, who's going to be responsible for it? I would think it would be Small Water. I mean, I'm not going to be calling. It's going well, to be, gonna be whoever same, we contract. Yeah, it's it's going to be, be whoever we contract now. Yeah. Small Water is going to call Hall Pump, and right. Hall Pump can't. <laughs> they'll call First Electric. Just the way it's working now. If there's a problem with anything else, right. Hall Pump looks at it. If they can't handle it, they call whoever. Right. So is the town going to buy the equipment and supply it to uh, First Electric? <laughs> or how does that work? It would be my recommendation that the Sewer Commission purchase the components directly from First Electric. You can do it either way, but that's my recommendation. Yeah. I don't understand how we're going to... If we do it the other way, I feel we're going to be paying sales tax. No, because everything, everything is going through. They're using the tax uh, ID for the town of Lundberg. I don't believe they mm. can do that. But you have, you have reason to believe, it sounds like, that Hull Pump, whether it be through small water or not, I don't want to go down that path again right now, <laughs> that, that Hull Pump would give us an updated quote for just the labor installation based upon us supplying this specific list of equipment. Hull Pump would be That's willing to do that. That's what I was trying to get okay. to with... First Electric, that um, they said they were working for Hall Pump, and I said fine. I had asked them to give me a updated quote. I was talking to First Electric, Hall Pump was there, uh, Mike from Hall Pump was there, mm -hmm. uh, and I expect those two to talk together and provide us with an updated quote with mm -hmm. all the information they asked for for the warranty, the tech support, mm -hmm. and the, and now the internet connection component. Right. So we need a quote from someone who is who in your is it Hall Pump. Hall Pump. Hall Pump. So we need a quote from Hall Pump based on this list of equipment mm -hmm. that that you've researched and sounds good right. of how much it would cost for us to have them install this equipment and program it and do all the connections. Right. And they all just that. need right. Okay. They need to revise uh, the, the original quote to include everything that we have now since. Discussed. discussed and, and now that we know which components we are getting uh, for the internet the other components are staying the same the controller and the touch screen and the labor the labor for the installate removal installation should pretty much be the same uh, I, I, there's going to be obviously some additional programming for the internet connection but they said they were they were going to be able to stay within their cost good you got in that other than the internet connection Okay. So, is, is Mr. Chair, Jay, is that all you're waiting for then? Is just to work out the deal with, with Hall Pump? Uh, 
Yeah, and I thought I would have I thought I would have that by now. I Mr. some way or something's been, the communication has been lost. Thanks, Mr. I, Mr. Most of my communication has been with First Electric because they are doing the installation. Most of my questions I talked with Dave Raymond over there and and Dylan, the um, the technicians. So is it reasonable? Um, is it reasonable to expect that by our next meeting in two weeks, we could have the hull pump quote? Have the list of equipment that's yes. referenced there, and the yes. cost of the equipment. So <coughs> one total, and we can one total package. Okay. Right. Okay. Because I told them we were, you know, we wanted to get moving on it. Mm. <coughs> yeah, anxious to yep. get into the 21st century. Okay. Any other? Does that do it, uh, Dave? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm you know, reluctant I, to ask. <laughs> Again, I know what Jay's doing. We're, we're playing baseball with the same players. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. And that's what yeah. makes it kind of exactly. complicated. You're playing ball with the same players. Exactly. It's just yeah. Uh, yeah. different hats. I, I understand what you're saying, but at the end of the day, all I really care about is price, mm -hmm. service, and, and the warranty. Right, and, right. and I understand what you're trying to do, but like I said, it's almost like playing with the same team. So, okay. Yep. Yep. But if you're saving money on the components by buying them direct... The warranty issue still should be a warranty issue. It's still, uh, like I say, usually when you buy equipment like that, it's warranted by the manufacturer. Exactly. And then the way manufacturer would pay the installer, make it clear, they would pay the installer if there's something wrong on the warranty. We wouldn't have to pay the installer to replace a warranty pot. You know what I'm saying? So if that touchpad breaks within the, the warranty period, I don't expect to get a bill well, that's, from Hall Park well, to that's replace the warranty pot. And that's why I wanted to put put the warranty in writing because that wasn't clear to me how that was going to work. Right. That's why I'm, I'm I'm trying to tell you make sure that the warranty is covered parts and labor if something replaces. So Hall Pump can't come back to Jack and say I replaced the keypad that was free but my labor. So it's parts and labor. You know what I mean? That's where they can. Right. I I right. Yeah. Well. Otherwise, it looks good. Yeah. No. I, some some good work. Okay. All right. Um, next item, the uh, Lake Whale and Pratt Street extension, and I'm not going to steal Dave's thunder because this is good thunder. Dave? Mr. Chair, if I take a moment to explain what we did on the Lake Whale and Pratt extension, we're trying to incorporate it in the other projects we have going on in town. Uh, we were short some votes. Uh, Mike Nalton and I spent the weekend plus down there talking to every resident. Um, and I just want to say um, there's a lot of myths out there, and there's a big story with Pratt Street and Renee Street. Am I saying that right? Renee, Renee Street? Renee. Um, I heard stories from uh, 15 years ago that the town people down there were promised sewer, uh, but it, for some reason, last minute, it went left instead of right. Uh, people bought homes um, that were being told sewer was going to go down. But there are also some myth myths in, in that area. So first of all, I just want to thank everybody we talked to. I mean, the conversation lasted from 20 minutes to some to an hour, and it was great. It's an old neighborhood, uh, good people, nice community. Uh, but some of the myths we heard, and I just want to make it clear that if a sewer goes by your house, it is not mandatory you, you tie in. Uh, you get a betterment, it betters your house. It's almost like an insurance policy but you do not have to tie in. And, and some of the residents quoted that, no, we were told that a sewer came down, we had to tie in, and, and that's the furthest. But if you do have a septic system that's in failure and the sewer goes by, when you want to sell the house or if it gets backed up real bad, then you tie in. Now, the average price of a uh, septic system in that neighborhood went from anywhere from 20000 to $45,000 over the last five years. Looking at that, we had people who just put it in a septic system two years ago, but signed the forms because they, they want to have that insurance policy. Now, we all know there's a water table problem down there. But talking with some of the residents, and I just want to mention, I had a great conversation with Mr. Champa, uh, who's lived there for 45 years. Um, he thought sewer was going to go in, and for some reason at the time it didn't, so we ended up buying a piece of blocked property behind his house. And he worked out with a selectman years ago uh, to buy that property to put a septic. 
Uh, if Stewart was there, obviously he wouldn't have to do that. Uh, I want to talk about a person named Mr. Desjardins. Uh, he was a, a very good conversation to talk to. He put Septic in 14 years ago. He, he decided at that time that he wanted to go with Septic, was, uh, with uh, Town uh, Sewer, but it wasn't there, so he went with the Septic. But he brought up an interesting point, and I just want to emphasize again that his concern was he just paid for a Septic, which is now 14 years old, and he took out a loan from the government 14 years ago, low interest loan, paid over 20 years. And I know it's not our responsibility, but he brought up a good point that there's a lot of residents in town, and it's not in the sewer district, has nothing to do with us, but I think, Mr. Chair, if we could, I'd like to look into some kind of programs for people in town who have failing systems, who are either retired or on the verge of retirement, who can't afford a septic system. And septics today, uh, the cheapest ones I know of, they're $25,000, $26,000, $30,000. But maybe if we can have a workshop with the Board of Health, maybe there are some programs out there that we can help some of these citizens uh, get a septic put in and uh, prolong their stays in Lunenburg and not worry about additional out twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. It's almost like the uh, uh, circuit breaker for the elderly. You know, if the circuit breaker can help the elderly meet their bills, and again, it's tax season, I, and I, I'm a big advocate for that, please go out and check the circuit breaker. But if we can help something like that, I urge maybe we can do a joint mm. session with the Board of Health. Uh, but we, I met other people out there, Kathleen Springs, very nice lady. I want to thank her for the time she spent with me. And uh, Mrs. Marcotte, who lives on Rene Street. Uh, her husband was a uh, bricklayer, and uh, they have a stucco. Uh, amazing lady, amazing life. I had a good time talking with her. So I enjoyed what we did. But at the end of the day, we got more than what we needed to run the sewer project down there. But I can't say enough for the people that, uh, I just want to thank you for letting us into your homes and talking to you. And I, I had a great time doing it. So, Mr. Chair, you got your votes. Outstanding. Excellent, excellent job. Really, really good work. Uh, and I have to tell you that uh, a lot of credit goes to, to Dave and Mike Nault. Um, this, this part of the betterment was, um, was about to fall through. Um, we didn't have the votes. We were quite a ways short, quite frankly. There were some 13, 13 votes short when uh, Mike and Dave took this, took this charter, um, and, they, and they took a lot of their personal time and, um, and, and made it happen. Uh, and, and I'd like to say this, this, this commission, I think that is the kind of spirit that this commission is looking for. Um, you know, people like to say that the commission's boards are policy uh, policy groups. Um, we we go beyond that, <laughs> and uh, if if you're uh, and I'll again solicit anyone who wants to be on the on the commission that uh, especially people with this kind of drive and and determination to get results and to help help the people in the community um, and and really roll their sleeves up because uh, this is good work and it feels good um, to have done um, so. But I just want thank to you say, again, thank you, Dave and Mike. I just want to say one thing too. We met a person who happens to be the uh, tax assessor. When that pipe goes by your house, it increases the property value for everybody. Uh, and, and, and again, the assessor's list was the name was on here, so we talked to him. So again, even if you don't tie in, and if you're on the verge of retiring, like I talked to some people, if you're there for another ten years, and if your septic system is going to fail. 10 years from now, a $20,000 septic system is not going to be $20,000 10 years from now. It'll probably be in those dollars, 28 to 30 grand. And it's a lot cheaper to tie into sewer that goes by your house than to spend that kind of money. Uh, so you might as well enjoy the benefits and make some profit when you do decide to move on. But in the meantime, again, thank you for all the people down there, what the betterment can do for you. I just so it's nobody out there panicking right now. I, they're... they're the valuation on their houses isn't going to go up when the sewer goes through, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just amazed that the uh, yeah, right. I was just amazed that people thought they had to tie in, and uh, it was, like I said, it was a learning experience for me, and I, and I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. Yeah. So. Well, other towns make work. you do that. Yeah. There are. It's, it's a good point. There are towns that we've been told, and there's been some discussion in this commission, but we've not done it. Um, that it. There are towns that do force you to uh, connect once the sewer goes by it's uh, we've had we've discussed that and have uh, every time it's been discussed decided that that's not really appropriate well like i say I, I think we learned a lot of good things but if we can like i say mr chair we're going to arrange a workshop with the board of health mm. on, and try to help other citizens who are outside the uh, uh, 
uh, sewer district. I think that would be a great thing yeah. For, yeah. for these people yeah. and help them out too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, that, I mean, that's a good suggestion, Barb. Maybe we could you know, take an action in one of our you know, some point a little downstream here because I, I think there's a couple of things that um, we keep touching upon that overlap between us and the Board of Health. I think there's more than just that one that we could we could put on that agenda. Yeah, uh, that would be a good one if we could do something that for the people. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks, well done. All right, um, the next one on the uh, project list was the, the flow rate metering. Um, Mike is, uh, is not here tonight, uh, so unless, unless Barb had any comments on that from the- No, I don't have any. On, we'll skip nope. over that one for now. Yep. Uh, grease trap compliance, um, the, the, uh, the Mike Dave duo on that one. <laughs> Again, uh, and my only small piece of it I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, put here is that we've, we've now um, collected the, all of the um, permit um, fees from, from everyone. Um, so that's complete. But Dave, if you have any, any other updates on the... I, I think, again, uh, educate, educate, educate. And uh, now the next thing is the reporting. But... I, I think, again, we're going to have to make some more visits. And, uh, Barbara, I think you're keeping a log on, on all that. So, and again, the, the people, I, I have no problem going out visiting if they have a problem or questions. And uh, a lot of us questions. Yeah. You know, a lot of us questions. Yeah. Yeah, I think we learned that um, when, when I had the opportunity to go with you trying to educate people on the, the permit uh, and the policy. Uh, uh, that once people understood, and that's why we have 100% compliance now with the permit fee, is now that they understand. Um, but now we've got to help them understand the reporting requirements because yeah. that's the next uh, the next step. That's the next step. But again, that's uh, that's the great thing about this this commission is we we uh, we reach out to the people and we try to solve the problems, not just uh, make lists of things. Did we also say that a three bay sink <coughs> means you have to have a grease trap? Yes. It yes. Yeah. If there's, a, if there's a three base sink in the operation, um, then grease trap is required, uh, not by us, but by Board of Health. And but this is the first year since we did com grease trap compliance that we're totally in compliance. So it took a couple of years, but. Uh yep. We have a good okay, that's more good news. Um, the next one um, on our action list is the uh, capacity fee policy, and uh, that one I own. Um, been working on um, <coughs> trying to, to see how it links with our current policies. And again, for anyone um, anyone out there, um, we now have entered the, a, a new world where we are having to buy capacity. Um, and um, we've just had to do that through the new Fitchburg IMA. We had to buy capacity and it, um, um, uh, specifically to improve the, um, the, the line down John Fitch Highway had to be increased in, in size. Um, not just for us, but fortunately also for Fitchburg, or it wouldn't have been done. So uh, we were able to jump on that, but we, we have had to pay uh, upfront. Um, it'll be spread over time, but we have to pay for capacity whether we use it or not. Um, and we need to f find an equitable way to, to flow that um, to new users. Not to, um, What's that cost, Mr. Chairman? Um, it's going to cost us um, the total uh, over the 20 year period is going to cost us about 18 close to $19,000 a year for that capacity. Um, it, 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 it actually works out to be um, a dollar uh, 87 per gallon of capacity. Cheaper than um, so dollar like 65. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. We got rid of the dollar 65 and now I got a dollar 80. <laughs> Seven. That was a hell Thank of you, deal. Jay. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, but that's a one-time cost. So, uh, so what we're looking at now, uh, and again, this is this is capacity for new users. When we when we looked at um, the sewer service area, um, uh, and you know, new extensions and uh, new users, we did not have the capacity to support that. So we uh, so we had to go secure it, and we and. Um, we do have the capacity for everyone who's been bettered, and that is part of our policy. As a matter of fact, that's why we need to deal with this capacity issue because uh, in our regulations, we're required to um, set aside 90% of the capacity of any house that's been bettered. So if we have a, a new betterment, you know, we have an extension uh, and they need 50,000 know, gallons per day, 
um, we need to secure and set aside 90% of that 45,000 gallons has to be available um, whether you know for whenever they may connect um, so that's why we need to, to keep ahead of the capacity curve or else we won't be able to allow extensions because we won't have the capacity to be able to improve an, an extension if we go over capacity what are we going to do with it if we go over capacity yeah. I mean, I mean if we gonna send it back if we have too much capacity <laughs> Yeah. Uh, maybe we could no, sell it. We, we're <laughs> contracted for 100,000 gallons, <coughs> and we send them 120. Are they going to send 20 back? Well, we're not going to send them any more than we have contracted for, because that's the kind of... I just asked you, what do we, we do if, we, if that happens? It can't happen. We can't allow that to happen. Okay. Right. Big sump pump. We can't. Because then, and the only way that would happen is if we allow more people to connect than we have capacity for. Four. Right. What's our safety? At least number? the calculated capacity. You know what? You know it bounces around, but the theoretical calculated capacity. We can't <coughs> allow more people to connect than we have. <coughs> What's our safety net now? What's the uh, capacity? <coughs> um, Are we under a certain amount? Now we um, we had good headroom to uh, actual usage. Um, our actual usage in the, these numbers are. Or pretty round, but our actual usage was um, um, on the line of interest here was like 30,000 <coughs> gallons a day average. Um, we had um, from you know prior agreement from the original IMA like 80, 000, uh, 70 thousand um, gallons, but that was um, just barely enough for everyone that had been bettered because we don't have we have maybe a little more than 50 percent people connected. So you can do the math pretty quick. If 50% are connected, the other 50% connect. That's double the right away. So we're already at 60. So we were on we were on the edge of not being able to have any additional exten um, um, extensions uh, with, if we hadn't secured this capacity. Um, so anyway, um, uh, I'm working on this. We may need to we we may need to um, we for sure are going to need to add some language to our um, our policies. To allow this, um, I think the the dollar sum. You know, we already have some coverage. Highfield um, development um, has already signed up, and you know, for some of this capacity to cover that development, we did not have that. Right. Um, so we'll keep moving on that. And I'm hoping before the the end of the fiscal year, we'll we'll have a policy that can at least be reviewed and approved, and has gone through legal. Great. Okay. Uh, the next one was privately funded extension um, policy. We don't have a champion on this one yet, um, but uh, we're proceeding. We're not going to wait for the champion. We've, we had a workshop, uh, internal workshop, and um, I have the ball right now on, on collecting the results of that workshop and uh, getting it to the team. And then the, the next step would be to, uh, to get inputs um, from the um, non-commissioned members that were part of the activity. Uh, the people on Lancaster Ave, the, the two people that were uh, mostly involved in driving that, and uh, DPW. So we'll I'll compile those notes, and we'll um, maybe maybe uh, maybe get a crack at discussing that at our next meeting in two weeks. And then finally, the business systems and process improvement. And this is uh, my my task with Barb uh, is to try to try to find ways that we can improve the efficiency. Um, one of the first ones was uh, minutes, uh, which are unbelievably detailed um, in general, not just bar, but uh, so we need to work on some of that. So there's no, um, no other activity there yet uh, other than the minutes. The billing cycle and the billing is, uh, is one of the next ones, but now hopefully with the Fitchburg IMA, um, that should simplify at least that piece of it, um, of the whole billing process. So that's the project updates uh, next the town caucus uh, I already mentioned um, town caucus was held we have an opening that uh, doesn't have anybody's name next to it and um, I think probably too late to take papers but it doesn't mm. mean that you can't step forward um, and be appointed be appointed by the uh, by the selectman but um, please give us a call Sorry, again so especially if you're uh, or decide if you're looking for some work <laughs> Okay, next one is, um, move along, not bad. Um, budget. Um, this Thursday, we'll present our budget to the FinCom, and uh, anyone who's interested in that can uh, come, to the, come to the meeting. It's here uh, Thursday night at 7. 
and uh, we'll present our budget budget which is uh, a balanced budget you'll you'll hear that many times during the presentation we're pretty pretty proud of that uh, a balanced budget with no rate increases so that's uh, that's even better Bonus. <laughs> mm. yeah did you want to repeat that <laughs> <laughs> okay Mr. So. Chair, I think that's an accomplishment just because of the, uh, for everybody you know, sitting on this board, uh, watching the budget, uh, going to outsource, and so I, I think everybody worked hard on this board to accomplish that for right. two years in a row. Right. And again, trying to keep the cost increases down for everybody, so good job. Yep. Our next job is to have a excess income so we can put it into sort of stabilization kind of things. Okay, um, minutes. Just had the one that was in the package. Yeah. 225, February 25th. Do, do you have the original? The original? Oh. <laughs> no, but it doesn't require signature anymore. I thought it doesn't require lines, but I thought it still required. No. No. We... I don't know if you were not there, but we did find out. We, it's not necessary. The process of voting to accept the minutes is in the minutes, so there's not a signature required. That's well. what I had found out. Okay. Mr. Chair, I put a motion out that we accept the minutes. A second? Uh -huh. Second. Okay. Oh, any, date, any discussion? It's the minutes of oh. February, 25th. February 25th. There you go. Thank you very much. Any discussion? Nope. Nope. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What? Vote. Vote. On what? For the minutes. For the minutes. I didn't vote. Are you abstaining? No. I'm <laughs> <laughs> not going to vote on them. So you're abstaining? So we have uh, abstaining? Yes. Okay. I didn't hear they, I, yes. you made the motion, uh, so I assume you, it was aye. a yes. Okay, yeah. Aye, aye. The ayes are one abstain. Okay. I hope to have more at the next meeting. And there, and from then on. <laughs> from then on. It's my intent. I, I it's think my if, plan. I, yeah, to catch up, we got quite a few, but <clears throat> I think probably two of meeting is probably all. That, people will be able to absorb <laughs> yes true. So. well they should be shorter I'm working on being brief yeah let's see how, how short we can make them without getting in trouble <laughs> 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 especially ones that are taped I don't know if this is mm. okay um, small water pump station reports do we have somebody trailing them yet Sorry, Mr. Bula. Do we have somebody trailing small waters? Trailing? Well, champion them. Uh, nope. nope. Are you volunteering? Yes, I am. <clears throat> and I'll do the what? generators as well. That'd be good. Yeah? Yeah, it would. Yeah. Yeah, you know generators. Yeah, because I'm a damn good mechanic. I, I didn't know what the word champion was, to be honest, which I never heard of. Well, that before. was in the uh, reports last time. Yeah. yeah, well, it's here, but I thought, like, that must be something for when you worked in your warehouse or your factory champion. I, I never heard of a call like that Access, before. We can call like it anything a, you like. Well, it's like, <laughs> I, I, I was like, what, what the hell is champion? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't well, know. Well, I guess that's just, it, it depends how you define the word. You're, you're yeah, it's... Uh, you're responsible for that. Yeah. Take the lead. Yeah. It's, it's more, it's, it's more an oversight to be the, the, yeah. the, the lead and sort of the motivator yep. stay on top of it report back it doesn't mean uh, it, it's, it's a good point for anyone's out there it, you know it, it doesn't mean you're necessarily responsible for the task and i think you know the the, the skater is probably a good example in a short-term example that you know jay is the is the champion with it um he's also been doing a lot of work so to, to date he's been doing the work and championing it S as soon as we get these quotes it'll turn over to the tbw but Jay, as long as he's here, will still be the champion. So when we want to 
If He's Jack's not, not here and we want to know something about it, Jay's the guy. Or if Jay says it's time to do the next pump station, then we don't use champion. We, we, we need it, to try it out. It's like responsibilities. I mean, I just never. Heard, I mean, is that from a, a factory or a warehouse or industry? I've, I've heard that. I it's from a, heard yeah, it before. It's yeah. from a consulting firm yeah. somewhere. I don't want to bore <laughs> people who I just <laughs> never heard. Of. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like responsibility. It's a very expensive so word. Okay. It's sort of like the cheerleader. <laughs> Yay. We'll stick with champion. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to get them to, you know, you, you could use cheerleader, Dave, if you like. But <laughs> the lack of another word. <laughs> You're the guy we're going to ask <laughs> if we have a question on that subject. Okay. Um, so, pump, uh, pump, pump station sure. reports. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, they look pretty quiet to me, as usual. Yeah. You know, I didn't see them. I they, were they, were, yeah. they were attached. In the, in they were, in the email. Yeah, I, I didn't see them in the email. Was there were separate? separate attachments. Yeah. I didn't. Okay. Are there any issues? You know what? We're very quiet. There was just one issue on March 10th at Mass One. March 10th and 12th with the seal. That was all. Very quiet. Okay. Business manager report. Just um, demand billings went out on the 12th, um, 189 demand notices. Um, and we have commenced sending demands and will send quarterly bills directly to the parks, the trailer parks, which mm -hmm. is a different a change um, based on requests. And I just have one invoice, um, which is the Fitchburg invoice, which matches again what we expected and it has the credit that we had asked Carl we had asked for at the meeting with Joe Jordan so it's for 7934 um, would have been 8100 so I've lost my pen is, is that the Fitchburg water bill that is the Fitch well, uh, sewer bill Mike's well. gonna, Mike's gonna be disappointed he I, know. <laughs> I, I, I don't feel comfortable signing this without I, Mike. I, I wouldn't sign it without Mike's uh, <laughs> It's what we expected again. Mm -hmm. And that was all. Um, place placeholders for the town meeting warrants were, were, were submitted to carry. Um, I have forwarded, forwarded on the second one regarding the map um, just to, for council review because Carrie wanted council to make sure it was worded correctly. So mm -hmm. okay. they have gone. Mr. That's Chair, right. if I could take yes. one moment to say mm -hmm. thank you to Bob for all the work of putting these budgets together and Very good job. all this other good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob, you did a good job with it. Thanks, Dave. Absolutely. What are our She's still hours? doing it. She's got to get my presentation for Thursday. What, what are our hours of operation for the sewer commission or the sewer? Seven, the seven to three, I kind of. Monday through Friday. Right? Okay. Which is the DPW's hours. Which is DPW's hours. Okay. I know you've been burning the midnight oil there, and I just want to make sure you got recognized for that. It's certainly after three when I was visiting with her. But. Um, the, the one thing uh, that reminds me, though, we didn't talk much about, um, I don't think we've talked a lot about it, but regarding the town, the town meeting and the, um, we now have uh, brought to fruition, thank you, Dave, the Pratt Street and thing, so the... Mm -hmm. The, what we approved is is exactly the uh, the submittal, um, but we do need to still and I don't know if, if, if you work with Jack or, <coughs> or whatever we need to um, now get um, Brett, <coughs> Brett Pierce Kevin Olson to support the town meeting to help explain these two projects and um, you know get get that uh, get that put to bed and there's a lot of work to do uh, to make it happen but <coughs> the next thing is to get 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 through town meeting. Like I said, though, hopefully we'll take a look at the whole project and share that cost over everybody. Um, but that's something that the engineers are going to have to look at as well. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a little challenging. We need to put some work into how to equitably share the costs. Yep. Because the two projects are pretty different. But we will find a way. To we'll find a way. Uh, Get the cost down. To do the the right thing. And okay. And just the next meeting, 
as usual, my usual thing is FinCom on this Thursday at 7 here, mm -hmm. and then April 8th at the DPW. So I, I, don't, I don't know if they're televising the FinCom meeting. I don't know. I know they tape right. it. I don't know if it's real time. Right. Um, but if anyone, you know, what will go over there will be could be interesting to some. It really will go over the budget. Mr. And, uh, Mr. Chair, according to PAC TV, uh, you will be on live Thursday night. Oh. Uh, you'll be appearing, so. Oh, I see. Okay. 7 o'clock Thursday night. Thank you, Joe. Uh, so we'll be live. If anyone um, you know really wants to hear you know what the what uh, what the plans are for next year, how we're spending the money, where it goes, um, um, I would encourage you to, to tune in. Okay. So you ready for a motion to adjourn? Yep. I make a motion we adjourn. Thank you, Butch. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, and thank, thank you. you all at home. <laughs>